whether in reference to numbers, ideas, brain mass, or... <laughs> There's been plenty of science and literature that reiterates size, size doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yet we continue to be drawn in by big numbers. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... And it seems that the size of those numbers that used to impress us has grown and grown out of control. In 2005, having a thousand readers meant that you were hot shit. But in 2016, anything below 1 million makes you a loser. In 2025, will we settle for no less than a billion to impress us? Today, I'm gonna put this size thing into perspective. Ugh. Dive a little bit into the psychology and history of quantity over quality, and hopefully give you some better metrics to judge people on. My name is Tara, and this is Truly Social. <laughs> Let's put this whole size thing into perspective. I hate to tell you this, but numbers aren't always what they seem to be. You talking about Willis? One way numbers are skewed is through gaming the system, because many hustlers understand that numbers can offer up some sort of semblance of validity. They tend to game the system in order to gain those numbers. Shall we play a game? There are multiple ways in which people can drive numbers quickly in order to seem more popular, and it won't even cost much. In fact, on Fiverr, you can buy about 2,000 subscribers for around $5. And you're cheap and horrible. The second way they're skewed is through advertising. These are honest views, but content has been boosted in order to get in front of lots of people in order to get those views. So it's not really organic or viral. It's strictly business. Well, a few years back, a client called me excitedly with the news that their video had been watched over 100,000 times and it had gone viral. But I knew that 92% of those views were paid and not organic. I didn't have the heart to tell her. You got the heart, but you ain't got the tools. So those top ads of any given year? Well, they're most likely top ads because they had the biggest budget. Shut up and take my money. Psychologically, we humans often rely on something called social proof to make quicker judgments on whether something is legit or not. Social proof is defined as a psychological phenomena where people assume the actions of others in an attempt to reflect correct behavior for a given situation. Here's an example. Think of that time you went to go into that restaurant, but it was empty. Well, the restaurant next door was full, so you decided it'd be better to go there instead. I'll have what she's having. Because, well, if all those people are dining there, it must be good. And we are all susceptible to this. Not because we're sheep, but because we have better things to do with our time than research every single person we come across or every single thing that we come across online and off to see if they're legit. I promise. Prove it. Okay. Numbers of followers or views is just one way in which we can validate this information, but it's a frequent one. In fact, we often judge quality based on quantity. We are more likely to say something tastes good or someone is better at what they do because their numbers are high. Higher priced wine has been shown to affect our enjoyment of it. Oh, it's flavors. They're just the most haunting and brilliant and thrilling and subtle. And now more subscribers is affecting how much someone can influence us. We think someone influences us because they have better taste or more experience, but how much of that influence is tied to, well, if so many other people think that he's right, I should too. Turns out a lot. 60% of the time it works every time. And many large YouTubers have reported that the first million subscribers take years and years and years, but after they hit a million, the next million takes very little time, and the million after that, and the million after that, because the million subscribers communicates that this content must be good to subscribe to. Was I, was I any good? But here's another angle that you should also consider, mass versus niche appeal. Some creators will never be huge because they appeal to a very specific audience, and that's important. Their goals may not be to make a living as a creator. Their goal may be just to support the work they're doing or reach a very, very specific niche. Let's just say I have a number in mind. I haven't hit it yet. 
Take my channel for instance, I don't think that I'll ever have a million subscribers and that isn't even my goal for this. I love making videos and I think they communicate a message way better than a written article. But what's important to me is that they reach and speak to the right people, not the mass of people. And even with my little bitty subscriber Aww. base, which I'm fiercely proud of, P.S., I get results. I get lots of emails from social and digital marketing pros that thank me for making a video that they could send to their client to help them make a point. Yeah! Check! And I get lots of leads from potential clients and other professional gigs because they were sent or came across one of my videos. Yes! Yes! So would I get more leads and more emails with more subscribers? Duh. <laughs> My point is that size isn't everything that matters, or it doesn't always matter. It's not a universal measurement of quality or success. My name is Tara, and this has been Truly Social.